Hey there, Benoit here, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the Business of Everyday podcast. My earnest desire is that our time together each week would encourage, inspire, and equip you to live each day of your life graciously to the glory of God. God requires fruitfulness in all areas of our lives. In fact, it brings glory to Him when we bear much fruit. But the thing is, you don't just bear much fruit by accident, but by being intentional. Join me and my friend Gideon as we talk about how to remain fruitful in all seasons of life. It's exciting to have you all join me today. Um, I have my brother Gideon joining and we are basically going to talk about Jesus as we've been doing. Our passage for today is taken from John 15, which says that um, the true vine. So I'm going to read from verse 1 through to 8. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So let me welcome you, uh, Gideon, to the Business of Everyday podcast. Glad to have you here. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah. So yes, let's jump into our passage for today, and it says that the true vine. For me, when I go through this scripture, it speaks a lot about purpose yes living out what god brought you here on this earth to do so for me when i go through this this is teaching me how to do that how to really live life and be fruitful in every aspect of life yes for me i think this passage also makes us see god as a businessman okay where he's he has a business and he's turning the purpose of his business Mm. and where he needs to deal with or get rid of to mm. get the business going he right. makes it known because it's all about being fruitful in every business and mm. for god he's purpose driven that's right he doesn't do anything in a vacuum mm. and in this passage we are made to know that there is a purpose for which god has created man mm-hmm. and if you're not serving that purpose you should know your end that's right yeah that's really true so um the very first verse that says that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. You know, this clearly defines the roles of certain characters in our life, if I should say. Jesus is calling himself the true vine. And away from that, he's also saying that his father is the vine dresser. And so for me, I see that there are lots of vines. And I believe that the vine is also synonymous to the church. You know, so if Jesus says he is the true vine, he is Christ. And together all believers form his body. And so if he calls us the church, then it means he is the church, right? Yes, he is the church. So if Christ is the true vine, then that means that we have false vines. And so there are certain things that when you see about something, it should tell you that this is true and this is not true. And so if you are abiding in something and that thing is true, the very qualities of that thing should be able to rub off of you. So here, Jesus is defining certain rules for us that I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. The subsequent verses talks about the various components of the vine that we'll get into. So I don't know which verse you'd want us to begin with here. Funny enough, the verse 1 also stands out to me. Okay. Where it says that I am the true vine. You know, yeah. Bible makes us understand that if a seed would grow to become a tree, it first has to die. That's right. That seed first has to die mm. and then it germinates 
becomes a seedling, mm. then becomes a tree. Right. And that's basically what Jesus did. Mm. It was that seed that died. Mm. So he's that true vine. And any other foundation that will be laid as a branch cannot be done outside this true vine. That's right. So every other vine that you find around is false. It's just trying to mimic the true vine. Mm. And so here Jesus has given a picture of who he is and who we are in him. Yeah. So we are the other branches that are growing on the true vine. This stands out to me so clearly that we have a true vine. And Jesus is saying that he's that plant that the father had prepared mm. that any other person that will come to him will come to him through this vine. That's true. But he will dress the vine. That's true. He will dress the vine. He will prune where there is a need to do pruning mm. and all. And he would, as he says further in the other scriptures, where the branches are not profitable and he needs to take it off so that profitable branches could have more space to bear more fruit. Mm. He would have to do so. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. You know, you talking about... Um, the vine, anything that we grow, first of all, it starts as a seed. Yes, that's and a seed. a seed must die in the soil before, you know, there's anything like germination or, mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me of the scripture in Luke. Mm-hmm. It says that anyone who wants to follow me must die to himself daily. That's the only way that we can follow him. Yeah. You know, so Jesus becoming that true vine had to go through that process, you know, and then being raised we who are also being called as his followers, we also need to go through that process because, you know, as we go deep down into the scripture, we would realize that, I mean, scripture says that without me, you cannot do anything. So if we are not going to die to ourselves daily, then it means that we are not really living for him. Because mm-hmm. if we die daily, it means that we are emptying ourselves daily. Mm-hmm. If you are full of yourself, you mm-hmm. cannot put on Christ. Mm-hmm. He gets it so there's also a need for us realizing that Jesus is the true vine and for him to even become that true vine, he had to go through that process and then become who he is. And, you know, the really interesting thing is that he didn't go through that thing like on his own. There was someone to take him through the process mm-hmm. and that's the vine dresser yeah. that the Bible calls, you know, God. There are some gardeners, if you call them to come to your house to do some weeding and pruning, Charlie... <laughs> You end up, you know, hating the, the flowers you once loved yeah. because they didn't do a good job. But yeah. realizing that God is the vine dresser, I yeah. mean, this brings me some sort of comfort yeah. knowing that yeah. even if I'm cut in a way that is painful, mm-hmm. you know that the vine dresser the vine, yeah. is the one who, like, he's the perfect one for the job. And so wherever he cuts, that is the right place to cut. And he knows what he's going to bring out by cutting that yeah. side. And so, I mean, the verse 2 says that every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. <laughs> this is really interesting because yeah. I like, okay, now if I don't bear fruit, wahala. If I bear fruit too, wahala. wahala. <laughs> so now well, what do we do? You know, so what, what's your take on this? You know, it's interesting to know that the psalmist said of God, your staff and your rod, the comfort. Right. You will wonder how is staff and rod comforting? Because mm. when you see mm. the king as a child, how is that comforting? That's, that's so true. Yeah, it's but, supposed to be some terror something. Exactly. You see, supposed to be a exactly. Pain, yeah. But God's discipline and God's way of training us and preparing us has a funny way of it being for our good. Everything God does is always for our good, that we may bear more fruit. And that fruit must start from a particular seed. You see, you cannot plant an orange seed and get a mango fruit. Mm. So the seed that has been planted are fruit that we will bear, which equally contains those seeds. That's right. So we are already coming from a source. You know, when you take a vine or you take a tree, when other branches that are not bearing fruit, Mm. they are just ending up taking space. Right. But you as a farmer, you want to make sure that you maximize your yield. Mm. Even if you are using four branches, getting four branches, those branches that are bearing the fruit, you must make sure that they bear more fruit. Mm. So you must clear space for them to bear more fruit. So those that are not bearing fruit are people who are in the Christian domain. They have accepted Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Mm. But there is no fruit being seen of them. There is nothing about uh, about them that shows the fruit of the seed that they have taken so far. So for such people, 
God may have to cut them off to make more room for people that are bearing fruit to show off. But even in God's way of cutting off people, he's very patient. Mm. The Bible says that God is patient and God is slow to anger. Mm. So God doesn't just do this thing in a rush. Mm. He takes time. He monitors these branches. I'm giving you time. I'm giving you time. He will keep pruning those branches and adding all sorts of fertilizers, all sorts of water, just to ensure that maybe one day I'll see this branch bear some fruit. Mm. But if consistently it's happening, to the extent that that branch is being an obstacle to another branch yeah. that is bearing fruit, then yeah. it has to be cleared. Yeah. Now, the one that is also bearing fruit, that needs pruning. We need to ensure that any wheat that is growing around this branch, we need to cut it off. Right. Because as little as they are, they are very dangerous mm. and they can destroy every fruit yeah. that a branch will bear. And it's just like the today, if a pastor is to is to fornicate, you will forget all the deliverance all right. and tongues he has, yeah. he has ever said. <laughs> all the good things he has said, you will forget about. Yeah. And that is how the wheat or the other things that are not needed that God prunes from branches that are bearing fruits mm. are. God sees the, the end from the beginning. Mm. But we may see the end probably in the middle or right. when it's even about yeah. to end. But God sees the end right from the beginning. So there are certain things that may come our way that God will take away. It's all part of the pruning mm, process. Yeah. These things are not just obstacles. They can be opportunities. Yeah. Not every opportunity is a good opportunity to embrace. It's a good opportunity to make more money. Mm. It's a good opportunity to be more recognized. Right. But it's not a good opportunity with regards to your work with God. Mm. And that is what comes first before any other thing. Yeah. It may not even be a good opportunity for your family. But it is something that is very rewarding. Mm. God sees all these things and is ready to prune us in such a way that we will come out perfectly as his son that he gave on this earth. Yeah. And the way he lived, he will want us to live and have that same testimony that we have fought a good fight, we have run the race and we have kept the faith. Right. Okay. You know, when you move down to um, the verse 8, it says that by this, my father is glorified. This whole thing is not really about bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. It's about bearing much fruit. Very much fruit. Yes, very much fruit. So we don't just end by, you know, yeah, I'm bearing fruit, that's it. No, yes. bearing much fruit. And the verse 8 says that, by this my father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciple. So clearly, one of the distinctive things about a disciple of Christ is very yeah. much fruit what is the fruit that we are talking about you know in galatians yeah. 5 22 yeah. yeah the bible talks about the, the fruit of the spirit, spirit. Uh -huh. yeah. so you, you look at all these things love patience self-control yeah. all these things these are things that i mean should be evident in in a life that is hidden in christ yeah these are things that should flow out of a life that is hidden in christ and one thing is that it's not like we are going to bear that fruit it is as a result of us dwelling abiding in the true vine that he bears those fruit through us it is the responsibility of the branch to stay connected okay. to the vine yeah. as long as you are connected to the vine it is the duty of the vine dresser to prune you to take care of you to ensure that you have all that it takes and so it is it is not right for you to have all that it takes and not bear much fruit so if you are in that position and you are not bearing much fruit then it means that is it that you are not dwelling in the vine or there are certain things that the vine dresser has overlooked and that is on the vine dresser. But mm -hmm. we have a vine dresser who is not overtaken by any surprise. Mm -hmm. He's aware of things even before they come. Exactly. And so we realize that it is our responsibility to stay rooted in the word. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the things that we've read, there's nothing that is telling us to go and do something. No. The only thing that we are being you know, admonished to do is to stay in the word. If you stay in the word, that is where all the nourishment comes from. So if we are staying in, then we have no reason not to bear much fruit. But I think here is where the issue is. Now, I'm a Christian. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I'm living the life that Jesus wants me to live. So why is it that I'm bearing fruit? So why do I have to, you know, be pruned? How do we get pruned? When we go through certain life situations, our character is developed by you know going through all these things sometimes god isn't the person bringing it upon us but if he's allowed some of these situations to come our way then it means that he has a reason for bringing them 
and then it will shape us well for where he's sending us. So now here's the thing. If we do not allow for certain things that are coming our way to shape us, and that's the pruning that we are talking about. We don't learn from all these things. And then we are like, why is this happening to me? Why is it happening to me? That is where we do not bear much fruit. Because if we understand that as a child of God, Romans 8, 28 says that all things, you know, they work together for our good. So if as a child of God, I realize that Jesus is the true vine, I am the branch and then I am hidden in Christ. The fact that I'm hidden in Christ means that I'm supposed to bear fruit. This world we are living in, it's a fallen world. And so because of the mere fact that it is falling, I don't even have to go and look for trouble. Trouble will come looking for me. Exactly. You get it. So if I'm going to walk on the face of this, then these things are bound to happen to me. But I understand that, you know, Psalm 23 has become one of my favorite scriptures because David says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And he goes on to say that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. Why? Because he is with me. And so if we recognize that God is not just our shepherd, a good shepherd. And if you really go through and find out what a shepherd does, not to talk of a good shepherd, then you realize that the shepherd basically lays down his life for the sheep. And that's what David did. And so looking at what he was able to do for the animals that he was even protecting in the wild, then he was like, even me, a man, I was able to do this for this sheep. Then what wouldn't God do for me? So he recognizes God as his shepherd. So if we recognize that God is our shepherd and nothing comes to us without him seeing it and we are staying in him, oh man, everything that is happening to us, it is not going to break us if he's allowed it. It is supposed to work something good in us. And so we will learn through it rather than complain through it. We'll grow through it rather than complain through it. When we get to the point where we understand that, okay, God is taking care of me, then we'll allow that process of pruning. And that is the only way we can bear much fruit. A lot of us are bearing fruit, but because we are not allowing the process that God is taking us to, to shape us, we are not bearing much fruit. And God is not pleased with that. He is pleased with what? Bearing much fruit. That is something that glorifies him. We cannot embrace mediocrity and go like, oh, this is what we've got. No, God has more for us. And so always we should seek to attain more because God always wants more for us. He didn't stop here by saying that you bear fruit. He says, the father is glorified that you would bear much fruit. The five, it says that I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can, you can do, do nothing. nothing. Yeah. Bible says that it is by him that we are able to will and to do. And without him, as he said here, we are nothing. Because it's the vine that has the roots. Branches don't have roots. If you pour water or anything that are nutrients to be picked from the soil, it's the vine that will pick it mm. and will distribute. Mm. So if you, the branch, has refused to connect to the vine, mm. or one way or the other, you are defective as a branch, so whatever nutrient that is being distributed across for you, you refuse to consume it to give you the fruit. Mm. It happens. People can come for church service and they are like the branches. Mm. You are taking all the nutrients that you are being exposed to. Mm. The sunlight is there, the water is there, the other nutrients you get from the soil is there. If you are able to come for that same service, and someone is able to go back and bear fruit and you cannot mm. and consistently then you must check it yeah you must check where the defects are before the fine dresser mm. comes back and then deals with you so this is something that we cannot emphasize on much yeah because indeed without him we are nothing yeah and you know this whole situation here someone would say okay so all the things that I'm doing, let, let's take, for example, people who do not know Christ and in the eyes of the world, they are doing amazing things, mm -hmm. big things like, yeah. you know, the things we see and some of them, <laughs> I mean, like we, we know all these things. Yeah. You see people doing all these big, big things. And Jesus is saying that without me, you can do nothing. nothing. And so, <laughs> well, for me, what this speaks to me is that as in the beginning, I said something about purpose. God brought us here for a reason, for a purpose. There's this scripture that says that um, we did this in your name and he will tell you, um, I do not know you, yeah. that kind of thing. And so even the things that we think they are God things, 
I'm doing this because, I mean, it is the right thing to do. Even the Bible says, yeah, the Bible says, but if God didn't instruct you, this is not what I have called you here to do. And you go about, okay, this is what I'm going to do. In the end, it will be a waste of time because this is not what I called you to do. What I called you to do, you've left it there. And so in the end, if we are marking fruitfulness, you are not fruitful because you didn't do what I asked you to do. Imagine you go to work and then you have been given, uh, what do they even call it? A target for the week to do it. And you get to the office and you're like, nah, this boss, what he's giving me today, I don't think it's really relevant. This is what I think. I think this will work well. Let me follow my plan and do this. At the end of the day, you are supposed to be um, appraised or you are supposed to be marked based on certain KPIs. Now you are called and then they mention the first thing. How did you do this? No, I did something else. Zero. Did you do this? No, I did this. Even though what you did also, it's a good thing. But in this moment, first of all, you didn't obey. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, this is not what you've been asked to do. Yeah. You know, so if we are going to really follow and in the end, receive that well done, good and faithful servant, then it means that we need to identify what God has called here to do. Yeah. Because if you end up living life, yes enjoying all all the things that you can enjoy you know doing all the good works i mean we are called on to good works but you cannot do works that are not inspired by god mm -hmm. so there's really a need especially for what the scripture says there's really a need for us to identify what god brought us here to do you know when it comes to issues of purpose mm. there is one ultimate purpose that god has for every person right. that is on earth here mm which is easier to identify than how we are going to achieve that purpose. Okay. People's focus oftentimes on how they were going to achieve the purpose for which God has called them mm. on this earth, mm. but they forget the main purpose for which they were brought here, which is even easier to identify mm. because the purpose for every man is to give glory to God. Right. Yeah. As to how we achieve that purpose can come differently. Some mm. do it in the field of academia. Mm. Some do it in the field of sports. Some do it in the field of business. Mm. But those are just ways that we can achieve that purpose. But mm. the, the overall purpose for which man was created in oh, his glory. image mm. and his likeness was that when they look at man in that image and likeness, all they can say is glory to God right. for what you have done. Yeah. And that is where even when you do church things, when you do spiritual things mm. and it is not aligning with the very first objective, mm. you may have identified it. Oh, yeah. God, the way God wants me to achieve my purpose on earth is through music. Mm. By using music to preach the gospel right. or by using words to preach the gospel or by using media to preach the gospel. But in that, is it for the glory of God? Mm. If it is not, then there's a problem. You see, right. Bible says that love the Lord your God. That's the most important mm. commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, heart yeah. with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Yeah. And Bible was very intentional when he said all. When you love God with 99% of your heart, you have still not achieved that mm. commandment. If you love God with 99.99% of your strength, you have not loved God. Mm. So your mind and your heart and your soul and your strength can never love God mm. and you think about glory for yourself. Yeah. Everything. It's like doing something for a spouse to be that you're interested in yeah. or your girlfriend, your boyfriend. If you like this lady, you do everything. Not so you'll be comfortable. That she'll be comfortable. <laughs> so that at least you have to paint some picture about yourself by how you treat the person. Yeah. And it's because your heart now, 100% is for that person. That is why you could do anything, even if it's to your disadvantage. Mm. You become selfless in that process. Right. When you, when you, when you, right. when you fall in love yeah. or you find somebody you are interested in, you become selfless. Mm. And that is how it is with God. All your heart cannot love God and you will still be self-centered. Mm. It is not. So yeah. doing nothing goes to that point where it even has to do with loving God with our heart, yeah. with our minds, yeah. with our strength, mm. and with our soul. Because without him, mm. without Jesus Christ, <laughs> that in itself cannot yeah. be possible.
You know what? I'm smiling here because like what you said just led me straight into what the seven says. You're talking about you cannot love God with all of your heart and what, what did you even say? With all your heart, with all your soul. All. Yeah, you said something about you cannot say you love God 100% with everything you have and then still be self-centered. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So the seven says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, I mean, that's the Holy Spirit at work here <laughs> because yes. I totally forgot it. Yes. He says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Yeah. Now, here is it. He says that if you abide in me and my words in you, you will ask what you desire. You go like, okay, so now like my desire. But we realize that God also says that delight yourself in me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Right. You realize that you also mentioned right now that you cannot be 100% involved all in and then you begin to have selfish you know, desires and ambitions. Yeah. Here is the case that as you are connected to God, as there's an exchange every day, every moment, like you are all in, he begins to exchange your desires for his. Yes. And so you no longer be having certain desires. And so in the end, you, you're like, okay, now when I pray, my prayers are being answered and all that. Exactly. But it is God's desires on your heart. So now you are praying the right prayers, what God wants for you. Mm -hmm. So here he's saying that you pray and then you know, you receive it because now the desires are not selfish. It yeah, is no. what God has for you originally. Yes. That is what has been replaced as you know, everything is being exchanged as you are in him. The vine is always exchanging with the branches and every other part mm -hmm. that is connected to it. Mm -hmm. So everything is like a cycle, a beautiful exchange. He takes in the junk. He gives us his goodness. Yeah. He takes in the junk. He gives us his love. He takes in the junk. He gives us his mercy. Yeah. Like the whole basis of everything we are doing in this Christian life is to stay rooted in the word of God. Stay like rooted. that is it. Yeah. A lady came to D.L. Moody okay. in his days. D.L. Moody was an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And he used to do a lot of mass crusade or mass outdoor mm. evangelism where mm. he speaks to mm. people, large crowds. Okay. After he made the altar call, mm. one lady refused to come forward because she wanted to have one question answered before she took the decision to accept Christ. Mm. So after the service, she came to him and said, Mr. Moody, if I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, would I be able to go for parties? <laughs> would I be able to follow my friends to where they want to go and do what they do? And Mr. Moody told her that, yes, if Christ becomes your Lord, then you can do anything you want. He said, are you sure I can do anything <laughs> I want? He said, yes. A few months later, this lady came to him. He was happy to see her. And she came to him and said, I believed everything you told me because if you accept Christ as your Lord and you are rooted in him, He's your Lord. He detects what you have. You, you seek nothing but to do the bid of your Lord. That's right. Indeed, you are able to do everything, everything. you want. <laughs> because now all I want is what Jesus wants. Want. That's true. And her want had just sublimed mm. in the air. It was gone. She no longer wanted the things that she wanted. You lose she, taste. She, you lose taste yes. for, for all those things. One of the preachers I listened to, she's like, how do you tempt me with something I'm already dead to? Mm -hmm. You cannot bring this to me. Mm -hmm. I'm dead to that old situation. It's mm -hmm. not me. I'm mm -hmm. dead to it. And so sometimes we go and you're like, all I want is you, Jesus. All I want is <laughs> We do it. We sing all the things and all that. And the next moment, you're like, hey, is it? Like we are struggling with accepting that is this really what Jesus has for me? Yeah. Like, hey, this thing is, is tough. And if we are having to face things like that, then we we need to get to the point of understanding that we are not really rooted in him. No. Because if we are really rooted in him, it will get to a time that you do not have taste for things like the former things. No. You, you do not taste. have taste for them at all. That exchange that goes on between, you know, the father... You know, in the sun, the sun and us. It's amazing. And if we are going to stay rooted in this word this year, trust me. He said that we are going to do greater things. And it's true. We are going to do that. Only if we abide in him. Yeah. If only we abide in, yeah. abide in him. We are going to do much more than Jesus came on earth to do. To do. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes it becomes a... I was telling friends some, some time ago that when Jesus was on earth, everything he did was to give glory to the Father. Hmm. He says that, I only do what I see the my Father, father do. do. Yeah. He speaks only what he hears the hmm. Father say. 
So everything he was doing was just to give glory to the yeah. Father. Yeah. So Jesus could turn five loaves of bread and two fishes that could feed a multitude yeah. of 5,000 right. men without children and women being counted. Yeah. And Jesus could still do it to give glory to God. Mm. But today, we can have <laughs> someone who can use a bottle of oil mm. to heal someone and yet want to profiteer from it. When right. Jesus did not build a bakery mm. after feeding 5,000 men with five loaves of bread mm. and two fishes. So it becomes the issue of why aren't you doing more than this yeah. man has done yeah. in our generation? Yeah. Why aren't we seeing the Red Sea being parted? Mm. Why aren't we seeing wonderful miracles like it was in the days of Jesus? Because Jesus had already given us that formula. I see, everything you are doing here, you cannot do it first. You can't do it without me. Mm. And secondly, you must do it to glorify the Father. Right. And your desire must be that desire I had mm. when I was on earth. Mm. And that desire was to glorify mm. the Father. That was the desire of Jesus. When the desires change, you cannot be a beneficiary of doing more than what Jesus came on earth to do. You are not because mm. that desire is not aligned. But the moment that desire is aligned, you are the most dangerous mm person on earth yeah all presidents will fear you yeah. because you you hold so much power that's true and i think that's where we need to let people's understanding also come to that god doesn't just give promotions and positions just for our sake god doesn't give you money just for your sake mm. god brings these blessings your way so he can be glorified right if at the end of the day these blessings you are using it as mechanism with your own strength to mm. find ways and means to grow these blessings in such a way that you'll be perceived in a certain manner, then you need to watch it because mm. you have defeated purpose. Yeah. Purpose is not about being this or being that. Purpose is about glorifying God. As to how you achieve that purpose is what we do not know from birth. Mm. But as for purpose, it is clearly stated in scripture. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. So, um, finally, we we will take this and then wrap, wrap up, up on. Yeah. yeah, I'm reading the verse six. Yeah, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and mm. they are burned. Mm. I'm going over the six again. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Okay, so here... Hmm. You know, just relating this to the passage in Matthew, mm. the Bible says that, you know, when we talk of people who are going to be bent and cast out mm. as a branch and mm. be withered and thrown into the fire, mm. we can liken it to those that are not going to make it to the kingdom mm. of God. When you take a vine, there are all sorts of harsh conditions that the branches will need to face. Mm. Like carrying your cross daily. There are mm. all sorts of, sort of things that when they will consistently need to deny themselves. Mm that we, we have a right, we have to enjoy this pleasure, we need to enjoy this comfort. They need to take on certain harsh conditions, mm. which some are not ready to take. Rain, shine. You know, rain, you know yeah. funny enough, there's there's nothing that shields, you know, a vine or a tree. Exactly. Whether rain, shine, exactly. uh, cold, uh, whatever exactly. we are in. And Bible says in the book of Matthew, that only he that will endure to the end mm. shall be saved. I see this in relation to this passage. Right. Only those that are able to endure all these mm. to the end where they bear fruit, mm. then God can say to them, well done, good and faithful servant, mm. come and enter into my rest. You were faithful with music. Mm. I will give you the music of heaven. Mm. You were faithful with business. I will give you the business of heaven. Mm. You were faithful. But for those that were not, and they could not take on these harsh conditions. Oh, I'm a Christian. Do you know how shameful it is my workplace? Everything about Christianity, they look at you. Even the ones that are false, they look at you. Mm. I cannot bear all this shame. I cannot bear all this disgrace. I cannot talk to my friends freely. No one can relate with me freely. Everybody sees me in a certain manner. They see me as outdated. I don't want to be related with anything like this. Mm. For such people, you are not bearing fruit. Mm. Because the people who you are supposed to bring as fruit for God, and they have rather taken you as fruit for themselves. Mm. And they are fruit for the fire. So you become a fruit of the fire yeah. as well. There's something that this verse is really speaking out to me. You know, sometimes, I don't think, sometimes like 
naturally. Yes, God created all the natural laws and all those things. But naturally, there are certain things that I believe God will not waste time with certain things. Like, let's say you are a branch, you are on a tree and you are not making good use of the resources that you are receiving from the, you know, the root. And it gets to a point, the wine dresser doesn't even have to come and cut you. No. You fall off. You fall off. Yes. When the wind is blowing and you are not firmly connected, exactly. it will blow you along. Blow you. And this is not God doing anything to you. You get it? When we are connected to the vine, there's something that I see it as community. When we are in a community, we have that protection. We have that comfort. And let me even drift a little and go to, I was talking about the good shepherd earlier. Yeah. And you realize that in scripture, Bible says that even if you have hundred sheep and then one gets lost and then he leaves the 99 and goes for the one. Why? Like you have 99. Why would you focus on the 99? Because the sheep naturally need leaders. And so if a sheep gets lost and you don't chase after it, that is the end. That's it. They cannot find their way back. And they will just fall off right now. And the thing is that when they are in the midst of the head, they are together. The enemy does not attack. It is the one that is wandering. Sheep, they don't walk like one one. They walk in groups. So if you see one walking around, that is a sign that this guy is lost. The enemy is waiting, like waiting, moving to and fro, waiting for whom to devour. Anytime one gets out of track, that is why God's love is always chasing after us to get us back because when we are together with the other believers, when mm -hmm. we are together with the other sheep, we are protected. You know, now the shepherd is not with the 99. Let's take like humanly speaking, the shepherd is not with the 99. But even him not being with the 99 and going after the one, the 99 is safe. It's safe. Because the enemy will not attack them in a group. No. He will attack the one that is walking alone because they know that if it is only one walking, then that guy is lost. And so you read this scripture and the scripture says that he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw into the fire. And they are burned. And so the enemy is always standing by. <laughs> Waiting. As long as you fall off. Oh, now jubilation. Let's carry, for fire. <laughs> let's, carry, let's, carry, let's carry him. You know, there's meat. Let's carry him. And so he's always waiting for a downfall. Always waiting, 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 waiting. Sometimes God doesn't even have to, you know, do anything natural circumstances natural things will just cause us to fall off that's why bible talks about building on what, build on a solid foundation yes, that's a rock yes you know so if no matter if you've built on a rock no matter the conditions that come and here the amazing thing is that our true vine is also the rock of ages anything that is and the rock of our salvation anything that is built on him shall never fall it is eternal and so let us learn to build our lives. Everything we do, it should stem out of our relationship with him. Because if we are connected to him, then, you know, the, the roots, the foundation of everything with which we are drawing from is Christ. And so everything we are doing is stemming out of our relationship with him. It's an overflow of his goodness. Whatever you are seeing, if, you know, the roots of the plant goes very deep and is able to get all the nutrients and everything, you know, if it's getting to the other parts of the branches, it is easier for everyone to receive all the things that the root is supplying. So we all flourish together. So once we are connected to Jesus, once we are, we are connected to him, we don't have to worry about, you know, how we are going because Jesus is already rooted and we are in him. Get into the word and, you know, our relationship will just flourish and then we'll get to bear much fruit as, you know, the Bible says. So basically we've been talking about um, how to stay fruitful in this year and beyond all the things that we are sharing with you there are things that it's not just for the now it's something that we can work with throughout our life if we get the understanding that jesus is the true vine and the vine dresser is god himself and to understand that whatever situation that you are going through as long as you are connected to the vine you will be pruned whether you are bearing fruit or not you'll be pruned in order for you to bear much fruit because god didn't create us for smaller things he made us for big things he didn't create us to settle for mediocrity he created us for more so there's always more in him for us we shouldn't pursue our own agenda whatever he has for us is the very best and so once we are connected to him the ideas will flow the influence will flow whatever we do will flourish and it will all bring glory to him that is the thing 
And so let me quote this scripture in Colossians 3, 23. That says that in everything you do, do it heartily as you do it unto God and not unto man. So if you are eating, eat like, <laughs> do it unto God. If you are working, work unto God. Thanks for listening today. I hope this has inspired you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the podcast so you do not miss an episode. I hope to meet you again next week right here on the Business of Everyday podcast. See you.